Let's go to our guests now in Tirana. Elisa Spiropali is the Socialist Government Spokeswoman. She's also the Minister of Parliamentary Relations. Alba Cela heads the European Programme at the Albanian Institute for International Studies. And Junita Gashi is a researcher at the Institute of Cultural Anthropology and the Study of Art in Albania. I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Elisa Spiropali, let me start with you. Is your government under pressure? Is the Prime Minister under pressure? given these protests and the fact that the opposition went from parliament to the streets? Well, the, the pressure is an unacceptable word in a democratic system. And uh, no, we're not under pressure. But uh, obviously, we understand that what is going on, it's not good for the country and especially the economy. Uh, let me give you a background on what is happening, because we feel like there are some serious misunderstandings about what's going on in the country. And the question that you're posing right now on screen that I'm seeing, it's, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, is inappropriate. Tell because me why. Because these are not, these are not uh, protests by the people for the people. These are two political parties organizing protests. So it's a protest in the palace of politics. And um, are two parties that have uh, lost elections uh, in 2017 and now in 2019 are calling um, for uh, a deal on the table. Mm -hmm. We're not here to make deals. We're here to get voted by the people. And that's what we are standing for. In June, we have local elections, and we're hoping that the two political parties organizing protests will use this energy to go into elections and get voted. We have a legitimate, a legitimate parliament. We have a legitimate government that came out of the elections of 2017 that was, were certified by all our uh, partners, o OSCE, or DEER here in the country, mm -hmm. the EU Commission, and all our serious institutions that do monitor Albania very, very closely. Right. In 2017, we had a deal with the opposition. It was an unprecedented deal, but it was our willingness to have a pair of elections that will not be contested. We managed to give the opposition uh, half of the, the ministers. We gave them uh, important ministries, like the Minister of Interior, that deals with the organization of elections, as well as Minister of Health, uh, Minister of Education, a series of other ministries uh, with large numbers of administration, which was their um, uh, immediate concern, then we managed to give them, for the first time in history, the head of the Central Election Committee, so was given to the opposition, together with the majority in Central Election Committee, and that was to have a, a certified result. And that's okay. what happened, actually. Okay, it was so the Elisa, most serene okay, election certainly, certainly. in history, and yeah. they were certified by all the international uh, community. You see them as sour losers. Let me ask Alba Cella if she believes that that question, should Prime Minister Eddie Rama resign, that you see on the screen, do you believe, Alba, that that is also an inappropriate question? Well, um, I think that that is a question that does not capture the reality of the crisis. There is not a normal situation. There is, of course, a political crisis. But I see that the question that you have chosen goes contrary to the process of elections, which was, as Elisa said, certified by the international observers. So yes, there is a political crisis, but it is more complex and uh, it should be treated as such than just your question. Okay, so Jonida, we have the opposition leader, Basha, who issued yeah. that <laughs> ultimatum to Prime Minister Rama, step down by the 16th of March or else. Is there any chance that the Prime Minister will actually do that? I don't know. I mean, I, I cannot answer that. Uh, I genuinely don't know. But uh, the real question for me is whether... Um, the resignation of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet of Ministers and new elections in the absence of substantial, uh, essential, fundamental reform will actually change anything. Uh, and I doubt that it will change anything, actually. However, the, the pressure that you mentioned in your first 
question. I mean, yes, I think there is pressure on both the government and the opposition. But to claim that this pressure has come about uh, unilaterally as a result of the actions of the opposition, or rather their decision to resign from parliament, is to misstate the situation. Where does it come from? The pressure has been building up for some time. Well, at least since the summer of 2018, Albania has no functioning high court or constitutional court as a result of the so-called justice reform, which began to be implemented in earnest really after the 2017 general elections. Now, this creates an institutional vacuum, which is a pretty a uh, pretty big one, you know, and it is it is easy to see how that could lead to a situation where the where the state of law, the constitutional order might actually uh, be threatened, which is the claim that the opposition have made uh, for justifying their decision to resign from parliament. And there is something true there, right? Because also in July 2018, the government managed to pass through parliament, uh, where it has the socialist, the ruling socialist party has an absolute majority, a special law which effectively enabled the government to bypass um, the public procurement law and award a private construction company a sizable chunk of land in the historic center of Tirana. Right. So the law was anti-constitutional, but the absence of a functional. Uh, constitutional court created an impasse. It also became the reason for a protest, which has still, which mm -hmm. is still uh, ongoing. Right. So the I think I think the opposition to claim that the opposition produced this crisis, this political crisis, unilaterally and in a fictitious way, uh, through their decision to resign from parliament, is not is okay. not right. So that let said, me ask I Elisa. Do okay. not believe that okay. early elections will automatically solve anything. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. I'm going to get to the question of snap Thank elections <laughs> in, in a few moments. But let me ask Elisa, from the opposition, they say the courts don't function and that the leadership is corrupt. That's why they've taken these drastic measures. Address that for us. Absolutely. I agree that the justice reform has a lot to do with it. The opposition has been consistently against the new justice reform. Uh, which, let me quote, has been uh, considered in all of the reports about Albania as uh, a model for the other countries in the, in the Western Balkans. So it's a radical reform that does address the question of corruption in the justice uh, system, as well as the impunity that has been endemic to the, to the justice system, but also to the political structure connected to the judiciary. So this justice reform that we have willingly, together with our partners here, uh, the U.S. Embassy as well, as well as the EU delegation and their experts have worked on, and now it's producing real results through the vetting process of judges and prosecutors, have uh, absolutely thrown out of the system, and I dare use this word, judges and prosecutors that have uh, not done their job, but also cannot justify their wealth and other, other issues. So this is uh, fundamental to changing the system in the country, and it has been considered the best reform that Albania or a, a Western Balkan country has undertaken. So we're proud of this reform, and we do not want to step back. And it's also the will of the European Union partners mm -hmm. that will consider the case of Albania in June for open negotiations for this reform to go on. There is a hesitation as well. There is a, a fight, I must say, in the opposition side to... Um, get rid of this reform, which I'm sorry, but we cannot consent to that. Albania has to do these reforms. Uh, obviously, they're painful in terms of breaking the connections of uh, old structures of politics with old structures of the judiciary, but it is fundamental that we do that to have a normal country that works through rule of right. law and have punity in the political systems. So, so yes. Right. Uh, it's not also it's not only a question of the electoral results, but also a question of fears that rise because of the justice reform. Elisa, I know there's a lot on the wish list of this government. 
EU accession, getting closer with Kosovo and, you know, opening the border and, and so on. Why don't you fast track the process and end the crisis by calling for snap elections? If it's the will of the people to have the current government of Prime Minister Edi Rama in power, why wait for those local elections in June? Why not call for snap elections and get it all done with now and we find out what the will of the people is right now? And then you can do everything else that you want to do. That is unacceptable at all levels because we cannot be, have disruption be a rule in this country. A few days ago, a delegation from the European Parliament, uh, together with the uh, Rapporteur for Albania of the European Union, came here and they produced a statement saying that any transition government or any other form of breaking with the current constitutional uh, framework would be, uh, to say the least, problematic for Albania in its EU path because we need stability, because we need development, because we need reforms to go on, and we need the legitimacy of the government. Can you imagine what that would mean, not only for Albania, but for all other countries in the region, in the Balkans, with the current um, political uh, uh, fights and lack of consent that we have, if any opposition would decide to, uh, let's say, burn their mandate, as they're calling it, and give up on uh, representation and mm -hmm. betray uh, the will of their voters, what would happen? No government would ever be right. able to govern, and we would go on in cyclical crisis trying to accommodate uh, the minority. So okay. this is... Uh, this is unacceptable. Okay, this is a so, legitimate so, so parliament, me, certainly. and this is a legitimate government, and uh, the, definitely the mandates of the opposition are now being replaced by the people on their lists, not Jonita, our lists. Okay, Jonita, do you agree with that, that snap elections are unacceptable, given that context? I think they are... I mean, I wouldn't use the word unacceptable. Um, I want to raise question marks about what they would solve without, as I said earlier, in the absence of, of structural reform. I mean, the, the, the electoral system that we have now, as of 2008, actually, after the infamous uh, Berisha Rama uh, pact, is basically a closed list um, proportional system, which effectively means that the electorates or the voters uh, vote on multi-name uh, party lists. And basically, this clearly means that voters have very little say on how these lists are compiled, these multi-name lists, and um, which position uh, the candidates have on these lists. So when they go and vote, they actually vote for the party as a whole, as opposed to the actual people who will actually represent mm -hmm. them in Parliament. And the other negative effect uh, that this has had, and it has been demonstrated, is to strengthen uh, the power of the party leader or the party leadership uh, with respect to the MPs, um, right? Uh, and we have seen uh, how that has been problematic, both on the side of the Socialist Party as well as the Democratic Party, so the two uh, main parties. Mm -hmm. At the very least, as I said, I think there has to be electoral reform before there are elections. Uh, the simple rotation of power uh, under the conditions in which we are today, I don't think it will necessarily bring about uh, very much very much change. But that there is popular dissatisfaction, there very much is popular dissatisfaction. Uh, and, you know, we don't need to, we shouldn't talk just about the protests uh, that are have been called or organized by the opposition, which have been taking place, place the past few weeks, especially, you know, since they resigned their mandates. But the student protest also, which started right. very suddenly in, in early December 2018, which was, I think, the strongest indicator yet that what is needed in Albania is a fundamentally new, uh, radically new uh, vision about uh, political conduct. Okay, um, okay, okay. Yep. Let, let me ask Alba, what's needed? Because not only, as we heard from Junita, not only do we have the opposition on the streets, we've also had students on the streets. Clearly there's a restlessness. How do we fix this and move forward? Well, I think it's important to keep in mind the context and the decision of the EU Council in June. We have two countries, Macedonia and Albania, which got half a rejection with a postponement last time, and this time they are waiting for the good news. And both these countries have a success story. Macedonia, the historical name uh, agreement with Greece, and yes, Albania, the justice reform, which has been applauded. But now there is an obstacle, of course, and this political crisis 
is real, is serious, and should be addressed. Uh, I agree that the democratic game has rules and that the parliament and government has, have legitimacy due to the elections, but also it is clear that a reconsidering and an agreement is necessary if we are to have positive decision in June for the EU. Because under these conditions, it would be very easy for those skeptical EU member states, like right. France, like the Netherlands, to use this situation as just one more excuse to say these countries are not ready yet. I uh, yeah, understand. So yes. shouldn't discount the seriousness of the right. situation. Okay. So let me ask. So let me ask somebody in government, Elisa. Over the past few weeks, given the crisis and the protests, have you felt that your chances with the EU have been dented? from your talks with the Europeans? Well, from all the communications, constant communications that we do have with our partners, we have an understanding um, about the situation. They're very informed. So they have made clear statements. Um, the EU delegation here, the office of uh, um, Mogherini in, in Brussels, as well as the U.S. presence here and the State Department. So they're, uh, they're very um, aware they're in this, uh, this conversation that we're having, and they have clear statements that the country needs uh, stability, that the opposition should stop uh, inciting violence which is unacceptable, and they should go back to the legitimate forums like the parliament and the rest. And um, we're hoping that the images that come from Albania will not be misused by elements that do not want Albania or other countries in the Western Balkans to be part of the European uh, Union. Right. We're hoping that uh, the forces, the progressive forces, and the forces that have spoken about Albania through the uh, uh, European Commission decision or a recommendation to open negotiations will uh, will continue and we will open negotiations in Brussels. But definitely images that come from here can um, can import uh, problems or issues even, even there, because definitely not all the forces in the European Union or all the parties or all the member states are... Uh, uh, are, are as understanding right. to use an understatement. Okay. So in this uh, in this situation, we are calling for for the opposition to go back to uh, to come back to normality, to use the forums to come and discuss uh, in the Commission the the electoral reform, which is very important mm -hmm. for improving standards. We created an ad hoc commission, a bipartisan commission chaired by uh, two prominent members of the Democratic Party and of the Socialist Party to have equal standing on electoral reform. And we have the draft ready. Uh, it's not worked by, by us, by the majority, okay. by, by the OSCE presence here and our partners. We have it ready and we are ready to negotiate um, and discuss about electoral reform. Okay. But we're not here to negotiate about the legitimacy of a government that is voted uh, by the people. That would be absolutely unnecessary and damaging to the country. Okay. Unfortunately, I've got a wrap. It's been great to talk to all three women on our panel, Elisa Spiropali, Albacela, and Junida Gashi. Good to get a closer look at Albanian politics for a change. Thanks so much Thank for joining us. Thank you for this chance. Breakfast.